Hey guys, how's everyone doing? My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide. And I've been recording these videos as I, oh, excuse me, study for NC7. And uh, I'm just kind of throwing them up here just as I, as I study. Anyways, I had someone in the last class ask me about uh, running a host scan on VPNs. And um, yeah, so in the last video, let me back up a little bit. We were uh, successful in getting our VPN tunnel um, up from our remote user, right, using SSL VPN, and uh, we were able to establish it, and from there, uh, they can access, you know, company-side resources. So there's our data centers, um, our uh, data centers firewall then here's also our iis server so anyways but uh one of my previous students bob what's up bob he was like hey you know what uh we mentioned running a host scan on the uh, machine that's coming in and if you think about it that's that's smart right so uh we're essentially uh, it's getting so late over here guys sorry uh we're essentially um uh, letting doors open into our network, right? And uh, once they're beyond our perimeter here, you know, I mean, that's that's a risk. It's just, it, it's a natively a risk um, all by itself. So, you know, we do have endpoint control though. And endpoint control would be registering the 40 client with the uh, endpoint management server that is a separate license, right? And that's where we could get full control all the way down to the host machine. Now, there is a... Uh, Oh my gosh, really? Four, four yawns? Anyways, uh, there, <laughs> so sorry guys. There is a better than nothing option though, but it's really tricky, okay? And that is using the uh, host check that's in your SSL VPN. Now, why it's tricky is because there's a couple of real big catches. So for starters, one is it has to be running a Windows machine because it actually ties into the security API. Let me uh, load that up. Let me load that up here. So what we're talking about here is when you go to your system settings in your Windows machines, this is the action center. This is the Windows security center, right? And as you can see, we have our virus and our threats saying that no threats were found. But, you know, it's giving me a, a negative because uh, I didn't set up I didn't set up my ransomware, okay? But other than that, I mean, it shows me that my, my uh, let me go back. And uh, let me refresh this. So, <laughs> so it shows me that I'm all green, okay? So, and, and what it does is that it ties into this Windows API. And Windows API is going to give you a yay or a nay if you have an antivirus turned on or if it's up to date or if your firewall's turned on, right? And uh, and that's another tricky thing because how it does this, guys, is that it's, it's I don't want to say janky, but it's janky. No, I don't know if that's the right word, but it's actually using the globally unique identifiers of certain vendors' applications. And those are what's being asked of, of the security center to see if they're installed, if they're running, and they're up to date. So um, let's go to the FortiGate, all right? So for starters here, if we do a, um, and this is on the headquarters, right? We're going to do a config um, VPN SSL web portal, all right? And then these are the web portals that we have defined and uh full access is the one that mr 40 docs coming in on so let's do that all right and then after that uh we can set the host check to either none av which is antivirus or firewall or both or custom all right so let's just we had all green check marks so let's say okay av that's good all right and we hit uh end and now we're gonna have to get yays from our Windows machine as it tries to connect through to the VPN tunnel in order for it to establish, all right? So like I was saying, it's not it's not like true endpoint control, but it's at least scanning the host machine before it comes in. But where is it really getting those AV FWs, OKs, and yays? It's because the FortiGate's asking the API if they have, are you ready? Config uh, VPN, oh, sorry. 
No, that was right. SSL web portal host check or web host check software. All right. And then if we do a show here, you guys see how there is predefined. Looks like it's just the 40 client. Say so we have a 40 client AV, 40 client firewall, right? We have AVG. All right, sure. We have CA, we have a Casper key. All right, F Secure, McAfee, Norden. All right, Sophos, Zone Alarm. Jeez, I didn't even see anything for Windows Defender, and that's the one that I'm running on. Anyways, but it asks those UIDs if they're running. And if they're running, then we know that we have a firewall on. If it's uh, if it's running and it's defined as um, if it's defined as antivirus, right? See how there was a little AV set there? Then it knows that it's it's running that antivirus. Now we could go and get our own GUID and put it in here, but the only problem is once uh something updates guys that that GUID should change it just seems like it's too too <laughs> i don't know not intelligent enough but so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to go ahead and commit anyways all right and if we go back to our host machine here and as as i you know mentioned here we have all greens okay um and then if we try to reestablish the tunnel okay so let's go ahead and disconnect. And I'm going to type in my 40 duck password. 40 duck. Okay, let's see if it passes it. It doesn't. All right. It doesn't pass. And what's even more shocking is there's no log file of it. Um, all we get is just kind of like this connection down. There's not even like a, see how it just says you failed your configuration? Go check with your admin. And this is me testing it out a little bit earlier, guys. We have, no, and this is on information level. Um, maybe if we try debug level, even though you think that'd be a, a bigger issue there, right? Um, yeah, isn't that weird? It's just weird. It just gives you an error. There's like no granularity whatsoever on like what's really going on here. So, um, so let's try that. I didn't even think about trying to do it at a debug level. If it'll even let me do it at a debug level. Upgrade to the full vision to okay, cute. Yeah, like I said, guys, in six two forty client, they locked like everything down. Maybe I can unlock it here. Hold up, I just noticed a little lock on the side. All right, sure, give me admin rights. All right, there we go. Let's try let's try debug because I'm not getting anything from that error message, right? So uh, let's go home. Let's go to 40 duck. All right, 40 duck. Type in his password, and maybe we'll get a little bit more detailed output there. So... See how it just drops at 80. So let's go to our settings. Let's go to export. Oh, it's going to try four times because we have four gateways. I found that out too. <laughs> Anyways, there's the readme log. All right. Do you want to replace it? Of course I do. All right. Okay. It's giving me a little bit more. All right. Uh, connected. Let's see here. Yeah, you know what? I would. That means nothing to me. That means nothing to me, guys. I would have to call the tag. Yeah. So, um, because you see how there's all these error minus 14 messages. And that's another thing I was going to bring up. So, because I was obviously playing with this beforehand. If we go onto the FortiGate and we look at the log files, all we get is a, a tunnel shutdown. We'd have to do our, our research. Nothing on here says that it failed an integrity check or uh, a host check. It, it just says it was shut down. So I could see how this could get pretty darn 
darn frustrating with the uh, with the administration side of things. Okay, so um, now pfft, whatever. All right, at this point, I probably break down and like get an EMS license. Um, anyways, but uh, the only thing that I can think of, and just to prove that that is the host check that's that's breaking it, I'm gonna go right back into my headquarters super quick and turn it off. And then you're going to see here with confidence it's going to um, connect us back up again with like no problem whatsoever. So here we go. All right. So let's do a config, uh, VPN, SSL, web portal, show. We're going to do edit of full access. And we're going to set the host check to none. All right. There we go, none. Just to prove that that is what's doing it. Um, here we go. Okay. For duck. I love you, for duck. All right, let's log in. And you're going to see it's just going to go ahead and, and, and connect. See so yeah, how we're already at 91, 98. So, um, so I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to pause the video. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and see. I'm going to go ahead and update all those pending updates in my security center because that's the only thing that I can think of that might be messing it up because what's going to happen um, if I really wanted to get this to work, okay, I would have to, all right, so if we go to our, uh, I would have to go into my registry keys, okay, see, see this? This device is missing important security and quality flaws. That's the only thing that I can think of that might be interfering with with the integrity check. So, um, you know, because it is being reported by the Action Center. But if I really wanted to get this to work, I would have to get the GUID specifically of the uh, uh, program that I was using. I'd have to make it as a custom and make sure it was running or define it as firewall or define it as AV, but you still have to have the, um, the uh, action center to be able to report it, that it's up to date and that it's on. And that shouldn't be a big deal because everyone has seen, especially older versus the windows, that little red flag that pop up, you know, saying, Hey, this has been compromised or, Hey, you have AV uh, signatures that are out of date. I did not expect that to, to log in so fast. Hold up. There's no way that could have updated all those updates. Let's take a look. I keep forgetting you guys have like the magic of fast forwarding. I don't. Um... All right, so here we go. Security and updates. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that was, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to get this thing up to date, and then we're going to try it one more time. Then after that, guys, I'm going to wash my hands of it for right now and put it on my 40 bucket list to get it to work someday. So it just seems like it'd be a lot of overhead. So um, just one second here, guys. Okay. All right. Jeez, talk about famous last words. Let me just update Windows and I'll be right back. Yeah, like four hours later. Anyways, let's wrap this up. So I'm going to verify um, that we got goods all around. So you see my action center? No actions needed. Okay, I'll do a double check <clears throat> with my all settings. I installed like four rounds of updates. And yeah, I mean, it's it should be good. I'll do it one more time just in case because I know my time was messed up. <clears throat> see there we go all right guys one last time at the security setting look at that all all green okay so everything's up to date the security center is sending us a solid this machine is good let's see if it works all right because i always interpreted <clears throat> it would at least use the windows basics if not anything so let's go back into our um, headquarters and let's turn it back on so because i turned it off remember just to confirm it well i guess it was seconds ago for you guys it was like years ago for me anyway so let's turn that back on so config uh, vpn ssl uh, web portal all right then we're going to do a sets oh sorry edits full access okay we're going to set 
Uh, host check. Okay, I better just type it out. There we go. <laughs> to uh, to uh, AV and firewall. All right. We'll do a commit, and let's see if it works. All right. If okay, so right now, if it does not work, the next step, if this is really a solution that we wanted to implement, all right, um, we would have to start getting into the GUIDs and the search forms and see what matched up with the most current flavor of Windows. So, <clears throat> or you know, Sophos or whatever is our our endpoint control. So, um, yeah. So let's connect. I acknowledge. All right, so 40 duck. 40 duck just wants to work. All right. Okay. Nope, see. It's still failing. So, obviously the the GUIDs are not matching up this flavor of Windows, all right? Um and this Forta client too does not offer any kind of endpoint control and I notice that some of the older GUIDs that were in there were probably for the licensed version. Well, guys, if we're using the 40 client licensed, we wouldn't have to do the host check, in my humble opinion. At least I think so. I'm not I'm not certified in EMS. I've actually never touched it before other than just a quick, you know, couple of demos here or reading about it there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to actually give this one kind of like a thumbs down for right now. And, <laughs> you know, I... I don't have that much time to play with it. Um, I'm going to have to put it on my 40 bucket list. So uh, if there's anyone out there that might stumble across this and gets it working, let me know. But other than that, I'm just I'm just not too impressed. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry to waste your time. Um, but, you know, it just looks like it's way too much administration overhead to get it working. I will throw it on my back burner. If I ever do get it working, I'll make a follow-up video. So, all right. Other than that, guys, I better get back to, to my studying. So, all right, until next time.